Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verba Noun. Okay, so here we are, part two of my interview with Betty Chun from the channel Articulations. If you haven't seen part one yet, I highly recommend it. I put the link right here. Go check it out. It's great. We're going to be asking the same standard questions that I ask most YouTubers, just for, you know, consistency's sake. Uh, even though I do ask everybody these questions, it is important to get a wide perspective. Yeah, some of the answers have overlaps, but, I mean, that's how you figure out what patterns are. So, let's check them out. You ready? Why did you decide to start Articulations? I've been watching YouTube for a very long time. I watch a lot of educational-based uh, shows that teaches you all kinds of things, science, history, um, psychology. I just find them really interesting. Uh, my personal passion is uh, for art and design, and I found, I found that there's just not, it's just not very well uh, as well represented as some of the other disciplines. There's obviously create a lot of great creators who are doing uh, shows on art and design and I've since been able to discover a lot of them but they are just uh, in general not very well represented and uh, not as many people are watching them as uh, compared to like physics or something like that. So I decided why not contribute to this and to just contribute to the uh, art world in general. Uh, it is something I'm passionate about. There is a bit of lacking in, in the YouTube world out there. Uh, so why not? Um, and I think also I, I did see that there are videos out there on art and also on YouTube. But they're not done in the same way as um, like YouTube channels. A lot of it is uh, some person who is talking sort of monotone in a documentary style over like a painting or something, which there's nothing wrong with. A lot of people, that's how they get their information. That's how they learn about art. And I think that's very helpful. But it does seem that in the YouTube world with the attention spans of people, that's not the best way for a lot of people, especially younger people, to learn about art. They like these things where that's kind of entertaining, that's a little bit like casual. That's not this monotone person talking down on uh, at you about art. That is something, uh, you know, that's kind of fun. So that's why I decided to do, you know, shorter and smaller videos where it's just me being kind of weird and sometimes kind of stupid. And uh, that's, that's why uh, I started like my version of uh, articulations. What surprised you about being on YouTube? So again, I've watched YouTube for so many years and I just never scrolled down. I just did this thing where I almost never scrolled down because I sort of know how comments can be. And uh, one of the things I started doing before I started creating, I did research on sort of what people like and what people don't like. And one of the, re one of the ways you find out is you scroll down and read the comments. Uh, and I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> and like, what? Uh, of course, like my own comments, I, I, the overwhelming majority has been positive because I have a very small channel with this very small but amazing, uh, you know, few people <laughs> who like who like like 99% of what I get is is great. So I have gotten snarky and com and sexist and stupid comments, but there's maybe only like eight of them. So. Uh, so for me, it's mostly just reading comments on other people's videos, which um, now I just have to go through because I'm also commenting. I want to participate. I want to see what people are interested in. And it's just so hard to ignore these comments that pop up like all the time. And um, yeah, like I'm glad I'm not getting them. Uh, that's fantastic. I just I don't want to have to read them, even though it's about other people. It's really hard to see that these uh creators who I've followed for years who I really love are getting attacked in certain ways. It's, it's hard for me to see that. So, um, you know, so it's a kind of before I kind of only saw mostly the positive side, which is great. And I was just kind of blind to this ugly part of the internet that it kind of shocked me, uh, you know. Uh, but another thing on, the, on a positive note, the, the, what shocked me is that people actually watch my videos as few as it is like I didn't think anybody would be watching my videos like let it all having like 100 subscribers like that I'm already like really there's 100 people out there who actually thought this was watchable especially when I record my videos on my phone my audio is so bad it's improved a little bit since I first started but it's mostly still pretty bad so it is just shocking that some people do find that entertaining or enjoyable in some way, and I've just gotten 
amazing feedback already. So that is fantastic. Yeah. Could you walk me through the process of making a video from conception to publication? It is very, usually very long, a very long process, and it's probably similar to a lot of other creators. Uh, but I, so I do keep a list of things I want to talk about. I actually didn't mention it in the introduction. Uh, my part-time job uh, is that I am a docent at this art gallery called the Art Gallery of Ontario, and I see so many exhibitions come in and out um, all the time, and uh, it's just, oh, uh, this is interesting, talking about whatever, like French painting, the 19th century, whatever, like anything that I think is interesting, I write it down. Or if I'm just at uh, walking down the street and I see something, I just jot it down. And uh, most of them never really amount to anything because I just write down everything. Some of them later I'm like, like there's, no, there's nothing there. <laughs> so uh, then um, once the topic is interesting enough that I'm like, this could really be something uh, I just, I start doing research and it's the same thing. I just write down every single detail that I think is relevant. I don't even worry about what an episode is going to end up being. Um, and once I have enough that I've written down, I actually start s sitting down and I write a script. Uh, I try my best to uh, have a good script because I want what I'm teaching people to be informative and based on uh, well-researched information. So um, if I'm doing something on, you know, like 20th century painters and whatever, uh, I want to make sure I'm getting the, the right facts. You know, same as channels like science and uh, science channels and physics and whatever where you want. You don't want to be teaching someone something wrong. Uh, but then what I do is um, I actually go back and rewrite it as more informal, which kind of seems like it's kind of a little bit backwards because I do very intentionally make my channel a vlog. Uh, so one of the problems I've always had with talking to people about art is that they think it's very elite and snobbish and that you're just this person who's going, oh, you know, art. Uh, so, uh, I, so I try to reverse that by making it more conversational, more like I'm just talking to you without a script, uh, so, which is kind of hard because I do actually have a script. So I do that. I make things sound, uh, I write things out as if I were just talking in conversation. So then I would have these um, conversation notes up on a screen when I, when I record. Uh, and that is really hard to speak naturally as if you don't have a script, but you actually do have a script. Uh, so then of course, just a normal like edit and uh, things like that. But when, when I'm editing, things don't actually change that much because everything will have been so overworked at this point that the editing process is actually really fast. And then, you know, then it's upload. <laughs> so, Do you have any big plans for articulations in the next year? I have actually recently uh, gotten onto an upload schedule. Uh, before it was just kind of like whenever. I think most creators when you first start is like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, I still don't know, really know what I'm doing. Um, but it is so um, I now I have like I regularly upload every Tuesday, which um, so I have these. Uh, I, so I've sort of developed like different types of uh, things I want to talk about. And I have decided that like specifically I want to uh, not just talk about uh, like things like art movements and um, like, you know, what like Renaissance or like Baroque. Like I don't just want to specifically define these different types of uh, art movements or artists or types. Um, I want to talk about things like the museum going experience. Um, I do like I also travel quite a bit, not, a, not as much as you, but I do also travel quite a bit and I want to incorporate what it's like to, you know, go to a museum in a different city uh, like I was in Chicago uh, a couple weeks ago. So yeah, like I, I want to be able to incorporate that um, experience of what loving art and experiencing art is like uh, with other experiences in life and just the different ways that um, uh, like the museum going experience can uh, help with that. And, but another thing uh, that I do, I do like to specifically focus on museums, not only because I, like, I work there, um, 
I want to know what can improve the quality of going to a museum or art gallery is because I find as in when I'm working there so many people just not necessarily aren't enjoying themselves just I don't think museums are doing everything they could to help people uh, you know break down these barriers to, uh, in experiencing art yeah and I and I want to I want to know like that's why like for me I I, I intentionally do it as a conversation so because I want to uh, solicit feedback from people in why they like going to a museum, why they don't like going to a museum, and um, and uh, yeah, I want I want to be able to find solutions. I don't just want to talk to people about art. I want to be able to uh, actually have the uh, people who are viewing my videos and who are commenting uh, let me know like their experience as well and how experiencing art could be even better. <laughs> so, how about a field trip to the museum? Yes, actually, so that is a good question, great question. Uh, I did actually want to do that uh, a few months ago. Uh, so actually, or yeah, maybe like about a month and a half ago. And uh, there is actually a permission and copyright issue with filming in a lot of galleries. And they basically told me I can't. <laughs> so even though I work there, um, well, it wasn't so much that I can't. It's like I actually have to go through like getting this license and getting like people to sign these forms. And I have to pay for some of these licenses. And again, my uh, YouTube channel doesn't generate money. So I was just like, that's probably not going to happen at least right now. Uh, so, so like I so I did actually manage to have uh, take some footages. Like in on my channel, you'll see there's some footages of certain parts of the museum I can film, but mostly the places with art, um, I can't. <laughs> so, which is the, the entire like I was able to film in the ca cafe, the um, uh, sort of the lobby, but um, other than that, it was just very limiting. So. Yeah, I really would like to do that, but I just uh, can't right now, <laughs> which sucks. I'm not like, oh, those people suck that they won't let me, <laughs> they won't let me film. Like they, st they're still great in saying, you know, there are certain parts you can film in, and they're still being very lenient with me um, and helpful. It's just, I do think that is possibly one of the reasons why you don't see so many art content uh, cre uh, creators on YouTube is because that. A lot of things like just legally or whatever they're just not able to do and I think there there should be it should be easier and again for me it was also harder for me to make the argument you know at the time with uh, the staff at the AGO because I don't have the amount of subscribers that Emily does you know I think at this time I had like 68 subscribers which was already like oh my god there are 68 people who like this um but it's it wasn't like I couldn't make the argument it's like hundreds of thousands of people are watching this it could be beneficial to your gallery like I couldn't really make that argument either so I think that might have also not helped my case so yeah Hey, and we're back. All right, so that was pretty sweet. I really like Betty. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, total disclaimer, Betty and I are totally friends. I sent her a Christmas card this year. Um, but that doesn't negate the fact that she's an awesome person and she has a great perspective on what it's like to be an educator on YouTube. Now, my question for you guys today is, for those of you who are yourselves doing educational YouTube channels, and I know there are a bunch of you, you know, what is your motivation? Why did you decide to start this? I want to know. And for those of you who aren't YouTube educators, well, if you were, what would you want to teach people about? Let me know what your answers are to that awesome question I just asked, and, you know, either through Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, you know, cleverly disguise it in a work of art and then get that work of art hung in a museum somewhere that I will visit and we can reenact the Da Vinci Code, whatever. Uh, and I will talk to you guys later. So until then, stay safe, stay classy, and stay awesome, and thanks for caring. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.